Hello, and welcome to another edition of Small Business Insights. I'm Don Emmett, Managing Director of Entrust Associates, and I'm here today with Owen Robinson of Right Choice Home Care. Owen, thank you for inviting us into your facility today here in uh, North Raleigh. Thank you for being, having me to be a part of our so, Small Business Insight. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Right Choice Home Care? Well, Right Choice actually started in 2009. Okay. Um, it is not a franchise. I okay. started it from um, scratch. I actually, background is in engineering. Okay. So in the um, downfall of that time, in, in the downfall of re when we had a recession, um, couldn't find a job. Usually the techie are the first to leave. Okay. So, um, couldn't find a job and I decided, well, I am going to start a, a business. So I started the, the um, staffing agency. Okay. And it was only staff and engineers and IT professionals. Okay. And in a period of time, things didn't get better with the economy, as you know. And it was a, I would say, kind of a foolish thing to focus on technical people. Tough to play. Tough to play. Tough to play. Exactly. People who got to the exactly. worst financial crisis. And exactly. Mm. So um, in that process, I decided, well, you know, I need to um, adapt in some way. Mm -hmm. And small business, I think, is one of the biggest things for small businesses, being able to adapt and change. Mm -hmm. um, Cisco can't sell toilet paper because they have a name of being in the technical field, but I can't because really I'm a small business. Right. And you can pivot. I can pivot. Exactly. So I decided what I'm going to switch to medical staffing, okay. and in the process of researching medical staffing, I ended up um, coming across the home care. And I was like, this seems like something I could do. And I ordered a book, it's a 400 and something page book, it said all you need to know about home care. Okay. I read that book and within four months I had a home care policy and written and went to the state and actually got it the first time, so I was like, well, this is good, you know, people are like, oh, well, you usually take six, seven months, but I was able to get through it and get it done. Um, and by that you mean a uh, license? Or yes, from, but the from, state, from the state, state is correct, because to operate as a home care license, uh, agency, you have to be licensed by the state, and to be licensed, you have to write a policy, how you're going to operate the okay. um, agency from A to Z. And you sit down and interview a panel of people, and if they feel like you're able or capable of running an agency, they will grant a license. Um, so we end up getting the license, and um, still was doing some of the staff, and that's why you saw the right choice solutions there because we're still doing the staffing. But the home care over the course of the past five years or so just consume a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Regulation rules, the changes, employee retention, and things such as that kind of took my focus off from the staff and, and I ended up actually transferring and selling the agency to a close friend. Um, but over the course we have, um, you know, have developed a strong uh, reputation within the, 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 the community and have they made that name recognition to where I'm, many places where I go I hear people are right choice. Oh, I heard of you guys, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, are y'all a franchise? No, we're not a franchise. You know, it's something that Sounds was like started. Sounds like a franchise. Yeah, you know, it's something that was started from um, a farm family business. Basically. Which kind of brings up the question, you know, you talked uh, about a growth strategy. Have you thought about becoming a franchise? There are several yeah, I, um, care franchises I know that are operating in the triangle. Correct. Have, I, at one point, I had um, um, flirted with the idea of doing a franchise and, 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 and didn't go through with it. Um, a year and a half ago, I was in the process of extending the mm -hmm. operation to Jacksonville, Florida. Went through the accreditation process, submitted the license to the state, but then personal reason, um, I ended up didn't fall through with that. That was one of the, the growth strategies. Okay. Um, one thing with our company that I like is the fact that we we, we are very uh, our portfolio is very diversified. 
Um, and with the portfolio we have, I said diversify, we, we, we don't only focus on Medicaid clients or we don't focus on solely on private pay. We have you know, VA clients, we have private pay, private insurance, um, Medicaid, and a big part of our clientele are kids with disabilities. Okay. Um, so we kind of set our part, ourselves apart in that industry. And upon being so diverse, what we look to do now um, is to build on what we have. And one of the things that we had knew that from last year where many home care agencies are non-medical. We are medical and non-medical. Okay. I mean, if we could provide skilled care, sending the nurses, registered nurse into the home, um, and regular CNA sending them into the home to do um, personal care services. So um, the strategy is to um, basically get a full-time marketing person who will focus on bringing in more of the higher clientele with the private pay, private insurance, and the skilled nursing um, case. For the main part of it with the children, we get referrals almost every day. So um, there will be no, we will only need to do any aggressive marketing in that, in that avenue is to have someone who could focus on bringing in um, more clientele in, in, in the private sector. Yeah, that's interesting because you know most people in you hear home care and most people in the industry are are uh, targeted toward the senior correct, uh, correct. and the elderly portion of the, of the, the population. So correct. So, so to have a differentiation, I've never heard of any uh, agency correct. focusing on uh, on children and with disabilities. That's yes, and and that was the initial, you know plan as we got into it, um, it was to focus on kids with disability. It was, it's a sector that's, um, one, it, it, we don't have enough provider that's doing it. Um, secondly, it's, it's a sector that takes more patient, takes more customer service, takes more skills, it takes a lot more than just a senior, mm -hmm. providing for a senior. Um, so a lot of agencies tend to steer away from pediatric, even workers' comp. Uh, company, you want you to have a small percentage of pediatric, and if you do it, if it's a major part of it, then your workers come, you know, even go higher. Mm -hmm. um, but with the senior, as a senior um, age, you you have a, a shorter lifespan. So um, my goal was if we focus on kids with disability, um, you know, we, these kids have spina bifida, they might have cerebral palsy, they might have. Um, something in that avenue doesn't sh necessarily shorten their lifespan as much as it would with a senior. So if you get a senior, maybe you have a couple of years and that person will pass away, a child you'll have 10, 12, 15 years of um, clientele and um, servicing. So it's more of a longevity type of thing that we focus on. Okay, that's a, that's a great strategy. I got to believe, um, you know, knowing someone about the industry, and most businesses that I come in contact with, you know, employees, employee, uh, attracting quality employees, retaining quality employees, managing employees is uh, probably one of their biggest challenges. Uh, and tell me, how, does, how do you and Right Choice and, and, go about your employee strategy? And you, um, you, know, you hit, you hit the um, nail right on the head. Um, the one thing with a low, uh, low wage position is going to be hard to retain uh, someone. And in this arena, it is a low wage position. And um, re retaining them will be is much harder. And mm -hmm. ironically, you would think that if you pay them higher, then you will retain them. But then over studying over the course of the year, I have tried various things and the same result. Um, so I, I have came to accept the fact that it's an industrial thing and it's a, it's a area where it's really hard to motivate. Mm -hmm. you know? um, a lot of the cases that you will see, they are young ladies with numerous kids and their life source is partially the government. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And for them to uh, stay on it, they have to make a certain amount, but they can't make too much. Okay. So what they'll do, they will come and apply for a job as a um, as a CNA, and they will work, and they will work for about six months, probably not even that, and they will leave because the government required okay. that you make a certain amount to show that you're working, and if you're working, once you prove that, a restart is the next six months. So by then, they leave and they go to another agency. You know, because they had just left that agency after working a couple of weeks or so and got all their paperwork signed. So six months trying to research again, they go apply for another agency and do the same thing over and over. Um, and over the course of the years, I have studied that and say it's hard to motivate people uh, where it's like that. Now you do have those good aides that you have to see them for who they are. You can't put everyone in the same um, bucket. So I, I. I once a year or so I would have numerous meetings because the aides work different shift and I would talk with them and basically we put them through a lot of training, you know, online where they don't have to come here or they could come here they get trained in the same way. Um, we do a lot of education, uh, educating, and at the same time, you know, I, I'm honest with them. You know, if, if you're here as a stepping stone, it's fine, you know, and I expect that. Um, because you have a family to feed and, and, and you're ambitious and I love an ambitious person. So for those that you find that are really good, they are looking to go to the next level. They're working on the LPA and they're working on the RN and then you want to really make sure that you support them and make sure that they feel like a family. Give them the flexibility so they, they get the education they need. Also, many of them that you'll find are just getting out of school. A lot of agencies don't hire people that's just getting out of school. That's not our value. Our value is Let's give you an opportunity because if nobody else gave it to you, then you're going to be knocking on every door and all they're going to say is that we need experience. Well, how are you going to get experience if someone going to give it to you? So get them, teach them the right way, and have them um, do it. It's also a number game as well. You might call 20 people, 10 will say they're going to come in for an interview. Out of that 10 that come in for an interview, two will show up. Yeah. Uh, our five will show up. Out of that five, two might hire. Out of that two, one will okay. set four out. So it's also a number game. So you've you understand and has accepted the realities of the cool. industry and the environment and you do what you can you exactly. partially with just numbers exactly and also with you know and trying to cultivate and maintain exactly. the uh, the uh, the candidates that, that seem to rise to the top and or giving uh, fresh new faces uh, exactly. an opportunity and training them the right way the right, way. The right Choice way, if you will. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you can use that. <laughs> so, in, in keeping along that um, vein, you know, your career in, in, in tech and engineering, and then becoming in a uh, somewhat of an accidental entrepreneur. <laughs> but um, what would you say was the best advice that um, you've been giving in, in your in your business career? You know, I listen to a lot of motivational speaking. Um, Les Brown, Tom, uh, Eric Thomas. Um, you know, we have. We, I listen to a lot of motivational. I, mean, I do. I read a lot. Um, and one thing that was said, um, and Eric Thomas is the one who I, I re remember saying this, um, is that it is. And Les also said it, it is okay to fail. And failure only happens when you stop and you give up. So I have accepted that a long time ago. And for that, it allows you to take calculated risks, which is necessary in business. Mm -hmm. You know, where those times where, you know, you're not going to get paid, but it, you have to make sure the employee gets paid. Or tomorrow is payroll and you have to wonder, okay, I miss a payment from Medicaid, how is this going to work out? Right. You know, yeah, there, sure. there's a lot of different things where small business owner or business owner period go through where you get to a level where it's no longer about you. Um, and you wake up every morning and if you have 40, 50 people working for you, then that's 40, 50 family that's, you know, um, depending on you. So if you yeah. don't want get, to get up out of bed, you're going to have to get up out of bed. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, if money is short, then you're going to have to find somewhere to, 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 to um, obtain it. Uh, so I would say, you know, the, the biggest thing for me that I have learned in my business career is that it's okay to fail. And, and, um, and failure is only if you stop. You know? So when you, when, you, when you put that in a perspective that it's okay, you, that fear is gone. Because then if we think it's not okay, then that fear is sitting and then the fear ends up crippling us. Okay. The other side of that coin is feeling I know what you're going to say. Uh, what advice then might you pass on to a, a budding entrepreneur, either one that uh, is intentionally looking to be an entrepreneur or uh, an accidental entrepreneur like, like yourself? Or? And I would say I would give that advice as well as what I just received. And the same thing I would add is that you know you have to see the end even before you get started. I think that's big. You have to see yourself with the, the 50, 60 employees. You have to see the million dollar company before you even um, register the company. And you have to keep that in mind because if you don't, then you end up losing focus over the course of the years and you, you, you end up you know, dropping out of the race. But if you have the end in mind, no matter how dark it gets, you know, there's an end coming and you can stick to it. So paraphrase kind of yeah. say is to set your goal, yeah. set, it, set it good ways in the future, exactly. and then uh, begin your path, have your strategies and tactics to work your way and your business toward your goal. And as uh, a wiser man than me said, uh, a journey of a thousand miles okay. begins one step, step you know, just keep, keep stepping. Exactly. Good stuff. Well, I want to thank you very much for inviting us in and telling us a little bit about your business philosophy and your story. Lots of luck to you and future success to you and thank you. Right choice. Thank you, sir. Cheers.